Yo, 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 welcome back to the Modern Creative Podcast, episode 46. It is your boy, Alberto Mendoza. How are you doing? I am well. Thank you for asking. What is going on, guys? Hopefully, you guys had a great holiday weekend, a great Thanksgiving. Hopefully, you guys spent a lot of quality time with your loved ones, family, friends, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever, your pets. Um, I sure did. Hung out with my family, ate really good. Um, and now we're back at it, man. It's a work week, so uh, I've been excited to get back on the grind. Um, I have a lot of things that I want to talk about, especially things that I just recently purchased with the whole Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales. So I definitely took advantage of that time to uh, get some cool accessories. But I'll talk about that in a second. But um, yeah, what I've been up to besides obviously spending time with the family, been doing again, like the same thing, been working a lot, man. I've been shooting a lot. I've been uh, doing a lot of pre-production for um, the final month of the year. I'm trying to close out 2024 pretty strong. I remember this time last year, uh, things were fairly slow for the most part. It all started in October and then November got a little bit more dry and then December got pretty dry. I think I had like two gigs, uh, if anything. Uh, but yeah, I want to make sure I that doesn't happen again because I did. I do remember taking the foot off the gas uh, at the end of Q3, heading into Q4. And so that, I definitely felt that. So I'm trying not to make that mistake. I've been grinding pretty hard, been posting consistently, um, updated my website. I'm currently working on a new 2024 reel. So I'm excited to roll that out within the next few weeks. Uh, but other than that, um, I'm, I'm kind of gearing more into, uh, I'm doing a lot of pre-production and obviously the production side, but I'm starting to like catch myself like, uh, delegating work now. Like I think I found a solid editor now and we've been communicating nonstop, um, trying to like get this going on. Um, he is uh, actually from overseas. So uh, shouts to homie for uh, actually helping me out a lot, man. And shouts to Joel too, man. Um, if you're listening to this, man, you definitely helped me out with, uh, with your plug. Uh, but yeah, um, that's kind of what I want to go towards 2024. I want to do more of the pre-production and the production side. Cause that is like, I like being involved in the pre-production side and I like to obviously film. Like I, I always say I could film all day long for 10, 15 hours. Like it, to me, that's nothing. The editing part, that's like the real work. So shouts to the people that love to stay at home and stare at a computer screen for hours and hours every single day. I can't do that. I must, well, I don't want to say a social butterfly, but I have a healthy balance of like wanting to be an introvert and wanting to be an extrovert. Like I do like to be outside a lot, but I also love being inside at the same time. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's talk about some of the stuff that I got uh, during the uh, holiday sale. First things first, I want to talk about the specific brand, Grams28. They reached out to me. They said, hey, I like what you're doing. I think this bag that we're about to drop is going to suit you for your professional needs. And I just want to hook you guys up. And so I said, bet, let's run it. So they sent it to me. And as of right now, I am loving this bag. Uh, I have replaced this bag with my old cheap bag that I had. I had a small little, like those standard uh, camera case, camera case bags that you see, like that, that you see old people use all the time. And so the only reason I use that for so many years, because I got it for free on Amazon when I bought a tripod or something, they, they sometimes give you some free stuff. And so I literally, literally ran it down to its last drop because that thing was like breaking down on me. And uh, Gramps 28, they like reached out at the perfect time. This is like a model is the 133 Essentials Case Max. This thing is like real leather, by the way. So this thing like is going to last me for years. It also comes with a shoulder strap, which I just have this attached right now for the podcast. I did take it for a wedding that I shot last month. So there was a moment where I had to be away from an actual big camera case and so I brought this with me on the go I was like pretty much in the other side of the venue and so what I did is I brought another lens in here I was actually able to fit two lenses in here plus a few accessories in this bag and uh, yeah man this bag is quite quite beastie and it is actually great quality as well um, it has a few pockets in here it's quite spacious I've able to put I was able to put another camera body during the weekend too and just like two other lenses and it actually fit pretty damn good and uh, look at I got a 3.5 millimeter jack in this little pocket right here one of the other reasons I love about this bag is that it's very stylish it's very sleek it's very low-key it doesn't scream camera bag it kind of acts like a kind of like a Merce if you want to say, but like, I mean, obviously I had a camera accessories in here. So like, if you want to take it around to a theme park or something like that, and you don't want to bring your travel camera backpack, this is the way to go. I'm going to be having a trip at the end of the year, and I'm definitely going to bring this bag just to have with me on the go. So shouts to Grams28 for hooking me up, man. If you guys are interested in their products, they have a pretty dope lineup of accessories for men. So I highly recommend you guys checking it out. Hit the link in the bio and uh, they'll sit you up straight. 
So guys, uh, I actually just purchased a incredible machine. Um, I actually went to the dark side and got myself a MacBook Pro. I am finally in the Mac OS system outside of obviously the iPhone. But yeah, this is the new MacBook Pro M3 Max chip. And my God, I am loving this machine so far. As you guys could tell, I got the new Space Black MacBook Pro. So yeah, I've been eyeing the MacBook Pro for quite a while now. Um, it, I mean, it feels forever, but realistically, it's been like four to five weeks, uh, pretty much since I went to Utah and I shot that short film. My buddy Rafi uh, owns the M1 Max Pro 16-inch MacBook Pro. And uh, when we were in Utah, he was showing me um, his editing process uh, during the film that we were filming. So he was cutting it up a little bit and he was showing me like, dude, like, check out the no lag. I'm like, what the heck, man? Like, I'm like, are, are the proxies on? He's like, no, I have no proxies on. And it was scrubbing like butter, which I'm currently not used to with this Windows machine. And so that right there sparked my interest. I'm like, all right, I really need to look into the MacBook Pros and see what they offer because this whole time, I've been an Apple hater. I've been a MacBook Pro hater, MacBook Air hater. So I was a classic Apple hater. I have been ride or die for PC and Windows since day one, um, mostly because it's all I could afford back then. And so uh, I've always been the guy that would say, you could get an incredible computer machine for half the price, if not a lot more than whatever Apple is going to charge you. Because even till today, I will still say, Apple charges an arm and a leg for their machines. but I understand why, like they are a reputable brand. They are a, it's a premium brand. To me, it's like the top of the line as far as like computer machines. And so like, I've, I've always loved the way they look. My old laptop is a 16 inch gaming laptop from Dell. And that machine ran pretty flawless until the last two to three years. And I got that machine in probably like in 2017, maybe 2018. So it's lasted me a long time. It's did me justice along with this big machine right here that I got right now. That's actually lasted me for quite a while too. And so I just hated the way it looked. It can never fit in my actual travel bags like it's supposed to because it's such a big laptop, which is the main reason why I decided to get the 14 inch MacBook Pro over the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Cause uh, I went to the Apple store, wanted to get a feel for it. And the 16 inches is a little bit too big for my taste. Granted, I am sacrificing real estate space by two inches, which to you guys may not seem like a lot, but if you're an editor, those two inches is pretty damn valuable. So I did hours upon hours upon hours, probably like hundreds of hours of research, uh, reading blogs, uh, YouTube, podcasts, trying to figure out which is the best MacBook Pro for me. I initially thought that I was going to cheap out and get an M2 Max possibly because the M3, the M2 and M3 was probably like six to seven months uh, difference as far as like when they dropped. So it was kind of wild that Apple dropped an M3 uh, chip so close to the M2 chip. Um, I'm surprised they didn't wait an entire year, but they rolled it out. It's a freaking amazing machine. Um, so it was between getting the M2 Max or an M3 Pro or M3 Max, which I ended up getting. And so after a ton of research, I decided to just stick with the M3 Max because that machine compared to like the M2 Max, uh, th there wasn't a huge price difference. So I just thought, and obviously great uh, marketing on Apple's part. I decided to just go with the M3 Max, souped it up, one terabyte SSD, 36 gigabytes of RAM, and uh, pulled the trigger on it. And I said, hey, this should in theory last me a solid 10 years. So what I plan on doing is selling all my Windows stuff. I'm going to sell my laptop and I eventually will sell this. But as of right now, I'm gonna keep this for a while because a lot of my active projects are window based and my external SSDs are not formatted or compatible, should I say, with the Apple system since I just have it on strictly Windows. So I'm gonna finish all my active projects. And, uh, but as of right now, like I, I, like I said, I've only had this for literally two days. And today is actually my second full day. Yesterday, I just did all the programming, get to learn the Mac OS, and I also uh, tested out Lightroom. I did have some photos that I needed edited for some clients, and so I was very impressed of how fast Lightroom was running and Photoshop was running on the laptop. It was pretty damn flawless. Uh, I remember like with this beast right here, which is 36 uh, gigabytes of RAM, it's like 256 on on SSD, but it's, like I said, I run off external SSDs. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's a great machine, but like I did notice on Lightroom, like every time I would, with the new AI features on Lightroom, it's just so great. So if I wanted to highlight the uh, subject a little bit more, um, the computer would take 
a few seconds, maybe like 30 seconds, uh, sometimes 45 seconds, like on a, on a bad day, uh, to detect the subject where on Lightroom on, uh, the MacBook pro, it detected instantly. And I was able to do whatever I want to. I was kind of doing a, a little mini stress test by going extreme on the contrast, going extreme on the clarity, saturation, whatever. And it was able to handle it pretty damn good, man. And the one thing I love about this, I mean, there's a million things why I love about the new MacBook pro, but I love that I can sit down on my couch, watch the game, and not worry about uh, battery life because my old laptop, dude, the battery would freaking die so fast if I had even just Lightroom, which is not as, I mean, it's a strong program, but compared to Adobe and After Effects, like that is nothing. So I would constantly have to plug in my computer to the to the nearest outlet because the battery just sucks so bad. And, and I, I replaced the battery too at one point. I got a brand new battery and it's, I was still having the same performance issues. Did a little bit more research and, I, and apparently Windows is like notorious for like bad uh, bad batteries or PCs in general. And so uh, yeah, I love that I could just have the MacBook on my lap anywhere I want and just work on things and have it work flawlessly. So there's a million things like, for example, like the, the Retina display. Like I love that the monitor on this laptop so damn great, so color accurate. Now I don't have to worry about color shifts when I do export something from Premiere and put it on my phone um, because I would always have to deal with it with these um, PC and window machines. And granted, it's probably my monitor. I probably have to color calibrate it and I probably should invest in a better monitor, which I plan on doing eventually down the line. Like I said, I plan on wiping all this out. I do plan on getting a new monitor and just have it work off the laptop the entire time. So I don't have to have a tower. I don't have to have anything else. Just want to simplify my workflow. And so the biggest thing that I love about the MacBook Pro is I finally can airdrop files. You have no idea how much I wanted airdrop in some sort of Windows system, PC system, and there just wasn't, unless, at least that I know of, there just wasn't anything that's compatible with the iPhone, maybe with Androids, but I don't have an Android, I have an iPhone. And so before I would have to export, open up Google Drive, dump it on a specific file, open up my phone, open up Google Drive, and find that file, hit download. And that right there took about a minute, minute and a half, maybe two minutes. But now I could actually export whatever files I want and instantly airdrop it to my phone. And that to me is so clutch. Like I love that so much. Like I know that's like an old piece of tech in a way, but the airdrop is so valuable now, man. Like I just love that I could transfer files from my phone to the to the MacBook Pro so quickly, so instantly. I had an editor uh, send me some files and I downloaded it on my phone. So I wanted to add it to the computer. And I was like, man, I have to upload it to Drive. I'm like, wait a minute, no, I don't. I could just simply airdrop it to the computer and it'll detect and it'll take those files instantly. Dude, I love that so much, man. So I'm currently loving the MacBook Pro as you guys could probably freaking tell. And But I'm still gonna be working with this, the Windows PC right here. I'm still gonna be working on it for a while, like I said, because I have, I probably have like 10 to 15 active projects as we speak. And so once those projects are done, I'm going to format the SSD so we can work on solely on just the MacBook or actually both MacBook and Windows in case I do have a Windows editor. So as far as other uh, Black Friday deals that I, that I took advantage of, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention when I did purchase the MacBook Pro, uh, Best Buy did have a $200 discount. So that was pretty neat. So I definitely took advantage of that. And uh, yeah, purchased it, was able to pick it up the next day and voila, now we're here. As far as other accessories, I did pick up another external SSD that's dedicated for the uh, MacBook Pro. This is the Samsung T7 Shield. Uh, this is the four terabyte one right here. And uh, yeah, man, I've heard a million great things about this specific hard drive. Um, I currently use the SanDisk um, SSDs. This is the two terabyte one that I'm that I've had for years now. I currently am running the four terabyte one right now on this computer with all my active projects. For this one, I have like a lot of personal projects, uh, like for example the podcast stuff, um, the BTS vlogs, and some other little things that I have right here, uh, travel stuff and whatnot. But I've read so many horrible stories about these specific SanDisk uh, external SSDs that it got me worried for a few months now, and so. I decided to, well, you know what? I got a new MacBook Pro. Let's start, like, let's do a whole wipeout. And I got myself another uh, SSD. And so I want to work off this from here on out. And uh, like I said, 
these SanDisk uh, SSDs have a pretty bad reputation at this point. If you Google SanDisk uh, external SSDs, you're gonna see what I'm talking about. So they're pretty much, a lot of people are complaining about them failing on them randomly, no warning, they just stop working and all their active projects get lost. And so uh, SanDisk has taken a, a pretty hard hit with this uh, with this article that just dropped recently. Uh, actually, it's not even recently, it's been months now at this point. And so this whole time I knew about this and I already had these two external SSDs, like I said, and I took extra care for them. I make sure I eject properly. I make sure I plug it in properly. I'm using the right cables for these specific drives, not just any USB cable or USB-C cable. And so I've been pretty damn safe with these and knocking on wood, things have been pretty good for me. Uh, so but at this point, I have transferred all my active projects to a separate drive just in case these were to fell on me. So, but like I said, I've had these for like four years this one specifically about four years, my four terabyte one for about a year and a half, and it's been pretty damn good. But again, I don't wanna have that in the back of my mind. So I decided to get Samsung. I remember when I was first getting SSDs, it was between Samsung or SanDisk. I literally went with SanDisk because my previous SD cards were all SanDisk. So I just said, hey, I, um, I know SanDisk. They've been solid for me, so what the heck? I'm gonna be loyal to them, but now, Finally switched to Samsung. I've heard great things about these. I decided to get the T7 over the T9 because since I have a MacBook Pro, I don't really know the science behind it, but it's kind of useless to get the T9, which is a little bit more expensive than this, uh, to the T7. So, so if you guys have an Apple computer and you're looking to invest in external SSDs, I was definitely looking to the uh, T7 Samsung for sure. Other things that I purchased as well, I got myself another V90 SD card. This one is the 128 Pro Grade um, V90 card. Um, I usually run two 256 gigabyte V90 cards, which is cost an arm and a leg, but this is the security of having a fast car, especially with these cameras. Like you definitely need a fast car that could read and write fairly quickly. So uh, the reason why I got this specific um, 128 is because when I hire and contract a second videographer, what I like to do is hand them my SD card to them. So they dual record, one on theirs, one on mine. And so at the end of the day, instead of having to open up a laptop, dump the files on the computer. I could just say, hey, give me back my SD card. All the media is already there and it's instant. To me, it's all about saving time and uh, I don't wanna rely on other people's SD cards. I don't know how well they take care of their equipment. Me, I am a freaking freak when it comes to my gear. I treat it like freaking gold. So whatever I give the second shooter, I know for sure it's going to work properly. Other than that, I got myself a couple of uh, accessories like a side handle and a top handle. I'm finally invested in the NATO rail system because I am so sick and tired of doing the old school screw on Allen wrench and all that good stuff. Like, I don't like doing that anymore. I When I first got those old top handle and side handles, I was definitely like starting off kind of. So I didn't really have the money and those were the cheapest option. But now uh, I, I like paying for convenience. I like paying for accessibility. I like paying for things that are just gonna make my life so much easier. So finally looked into the NATO rail system I've been wanting to, again, it doesn't really cause it that much either. But like I said, back then I was saving every single penny and I, I made it work. I made it work for like four years. So right now I'm gonna put all those accessories for sale and just have all these NATO rails. So I was like kind of playing with it today and uh, it just makes, it's just so fast and easy and simple to like slide in a ha top handle, sliding a side handle if I want to. Oh, if I want to go back on the gimbal, I can slide it off real quick instead of screwing it on manually, which is quite annoying. And I, I remember during shoots, I would hate that process because it just takes a lot of time. Like I want to simplify my workflow. Uh, eventually I will plan on, I do plan on getting another camera, either a bigger camera, like a FX6 or an FX3 or something smaller like a FX30 or an A7 IV because I want one camera to be dedicated for sticks and one camera dedicated for a gimbal work. So I don't want to be flip-flopping with equipment and taking off the cage or putting on the cage, taking off the top handle with the monitor, side handle, all that good stuff. So like I said, the older I'm getting, the more I'm realizing that I just want to make my life so much simpler during production so I can just concentrate on the client, concentrate on the actual shoot itself and really kill it for them. But that is it guys. I'm curious to know if you guys got some stuff during Black Friday. I definitely did, as you see. I definitely saved myself a few hundred dollars uh, with these sales. Even if it's like $10 off, $15 off, $20 off, I still save some money. So uh, to me, every penny counts. Um, so I'm curious to know if you guys got some cool things on Black Friday. Feel free to leave in the comments below if you're on YouTube. While you're on YouTube, 
Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. If you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, hit it, give it a five-star rating. And uh, I would appreciate it if you guys give it a nice review on Apple Podcasts for all my Apple Podcast users. Uh, that's going to be it for me, guys. I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.